Okay. So let's just get a few few things in the chat again. So um, if you're not part of a WhatsApp group and want to join the WhatsApp group, let me quickly just um, add the, the link to a WhatsApp group for you guys. Then as always, all the sessions are recorded um, and I will share it later today, the links and the presentation um, with you. So, so don't worry about about that. Let me just check if I've got the link somewhere in the chat already. A link is in the chat. And let me just get the attendance register. Then we can start. Okay, cool. So I know you guys are already writing your, your mock exams and things like that. Um, but we still need to need to look at um, integration. Um, there's also still enough time for us to um, to do exam prep before you before you write exam in in June. Um, so yeah, today basically going to look look at integration. Um, so that we can make that a bit bit simpler for you guys. Um, so let's look at just quickly the, the learning objectives in, in this session. Um, so we're going to look at the, the concepts of, of integration um, and basically going to look at how it differs from on differentiation and the links between the two. Then as in what we did with differentiation, we're going to look at the rules for for integration. Um, so again, there's going to be a power rule. There's going to be a substitution rule. Um, then the other last two things is just to, to look at what is definite um, integration um, and we look at some of the application around the area um, underneath sometimes um, or else just around the curve. In, in the next study unit we will look at also the um, the consumer surplus, producer surplus, uh, those kind of things as well. Um, that is more with uh, the application of uh, the integration. Um, just like we did with nearly study units three and four, where we also looked there at some of the applications of the of a linear linear graph. So. So basically integration and, and it's also in your textbooks or in your study guides rather. Um, and I think the best way to describe it nearly is um, it, it is the reverse of, of differentiation. Um, and the easiest nearly always for me to, to look at it. So if, if we add a function um, say 5x to a power of 3 and and we differentiated it, we would have said the 3 goes in front, so 3 times 5 is 15, x and we would have said 3 minus 1, which would have been then 15, x, sorry, x to a power of 2. Okay, so now when we 
want to move back with with integration um, what we will basically do is to say okay you've got your 15 so you put the one back so two plus one and then whatever you have here you will divide by Just quickly fix my screen again. Okay, so you've got the 15x uh, to the power of 2. So we add for 1 back. Uh, then it is 2 plus 1 is 3. So we divide by, by that. So then it becomes 15 divided by 3 is 5. x to the power of 3. Okay, so basically what we do with integration is we reverse the differentiation or it is the reverse of the differentiation. Okay, so you can always nearly test if you're doing it correctly by checking what the differentiation would have been. Okay, so then as in differentiation, we've got some rules for for integration. Um, so we have a power rule that we basically did just now. Um, the one thing that I forgot to add there um, is the constant even though we saw originally there wasn't any, um, when we get this to, to differentiate, we don't know if there was, was a constant as well in the, in the beginning. So the one thing that we will always need to, need to add is, is the C for constant because we don't know um, always if there was a number or not. Um, so just for for nearly completing the the story, we will we will add plus c. Um, so you will also see when you when you answer questions about integration that that there's normally a plus c in your answer set, um, just because. It's one of those that you don't know if there was maybe a 20 or something that because you differentiated it, it disappeared. Um, so just with the integration rules, um, we will always add the plus C and you can nearly see even when we look at, at the log functions, we will add to see when you look at some of the exponential functions um, we we will always add that okay so that is just just the important one we don't do absolute value so you don't need to worry about that one and this one is just again if you if you see any of these I haven't seen nearly these ones, but um, if you do, you will basically just split it um, up between two. So if you get an integration of, of two functions, um, you will basically first do the integration of a one, then the integration of, of the other one. Okay, so important power rule, important also the exponential because they love to to ask for exponential and they also love to to nearly include somewhere a log a log question in as well. So what I also included here for you guys is we've got these rules, but this is also um one that you can just 
um, keep at hand. Um, and let's just quickly check if I can just make it a bit bigger. Because again, as you would have seen with your mock exam, you are allowed to have study notes and things like that. Um, so again, just some of the, the basic integration rules or formulas. So that was the first one that we did. Um, if there is one where there's a constant in front of in front of a formula, um, it just replicated. Um, okay, this was the one that we that we did. That was just the original one. Here's the log one. Here's the exponential one. Um, there is a combination one. Um, so just to give you a sense of of all of them again, just in a simpler format than this one because this also looks sometimes frightening if one looks at it from this point but um, yeah one can definitely see it more clearer for you guys okay so again please you are allowed to to have your notes so if you can um, I'm in any case still prepping you uh, a formless sheet as well that I will share um, in the next week or two so that you can um, nearly get to get it printed and things like that because you are allowed to have have a printed material. Um, sometimes it's difficult when it is um, PDF or something like that um, because you are already working on your laptop or on your phone with your exam. So it's sometimes difficult to to maneuver between screens and things like that. So sometimes it is just easier to have have a printed copy of it. OK, so with um, the integration, basically what what we're going to look at um, when it comes to to the areas um, that that we will need to define. So depending on how that that graph looks like, um, it might be that we're looking at the area between two points. So way at the end of a question, so we would nearly have this function, and then we will say between where they also say, it, but it might also be um, signage like this, a uh, straight line and say between B and A, so that you will need to get that area. Um, so the same, you will see that a lot of time in this way, they do it as this. But that is the same to to say you want to get the integration and so they might use it this way they might use it the other way so depending also on on what you google and just be be careful the they both ways are correct. So if you if you Google integration and you look at certain videos, it might be that that we use it both ways. Um, so both ways um, is acceptable. Um, if you look at at questions that we need to evaluate in today's session, um, they write it like this. Um, but let me quickly see. So there you could see also they write it like that, but then they work it out like 
for two and for minus one. So just be when we talk about it in in sessions or when you look at YouTube clips that just be this is for one that is normally used. Um, but it might just be that they write it a bit bit differently um, because they already want you to to integrate between two points. They might already say, but integrate between two points. OK, so just a bit careful um, so that you don't nearly get confused when you are looking at some of the things online and you see that that there might be different ways um, of of showing it. OK, so that is nearly nearly the theory part of of integration. So it basically tells us that that we're doing rever the reverse of differentiation. Then we have some integration formulas. Um, and then the next one from integration formulas is if we've got an area that we need to define, um, they will tell you between which points you need to nearly work out work out that that area. Okay, so the other thing that we will do do next week is um, where we will do the application of this is basically looking at your your marginal revenue um, taking marginal revenue further or working back from marginal revenue to total revenue. Um, so, and the same with cost and the same with profit. Um, so that we basically do all of those things next week. Um, we will use then these curves also to work out a bit further on your consumer surplus and your producer surplus. Um, we will use these these concepts for for that. OK, but let's get a bit into the theory and a bit of of those questions. Um, so. This one is actually more to do with with some of the, the, the previous work that that we've done, um, but I thought why I included it is because what what they love to do and and you will probably see it already with your uh, mock exam that that you guys were writing is there is not and how to put it bluntly nearly that they start with question one from study unit one and then they work through and your last question is on study unit unit eight so they love to mix it up um, so and that's why when you look at um, these questions that I have today it's nearly a, a combination of integration and differentiation just so that if you see it in the exam that one is not because the previous question was maybe integration now you think oh this is another integration or if the previous one was differentiation then you think but logical this must be differentiation so I have mixed it up a bit for for this session just that um, we look at certain things within a question so that we can identify if it is differentiation if it is integration because they don't always say it out in a question what what you need to do okay so this question
Okay, so so let me quickly show you in this one. So find the values of x for which were function as a maximum or minimum. Okay, so when we see these words of maximum, minimum, that nearly needs to tell us that we need to differentiate. Okay, so so when you see maximum, minimum, um, it means differentiation. So we did it way back in study unit two and three as well, where we got the turning point nearly of, of a linear. Um, that actually was also differentiation. We just used a different concept, um, but it will give you um, the same answers. Okay, so let's let's look at this one. We need to need to work out the maximum and, and minimum. Um, so first we've got this function. We need to differentiate this function. I will now write that a bit clearer. So that when I share the, the slide back with you guys as well, it doesn't look weird. Um, so need to differentiate this one. So the three goes to the front. That becomes. And because we want to work out the maximum or minimum, that needs to be equal to zero. Okay, so now we basically go back to nearly the first study unit that we did, and now we need to just simplify this. So if I look at what is in both, I see there's a free x in both. Um, what's left is x. What's left is plus 2. And then my first answer is free x is equal to 0. Or x plus 2 is equal to 0. So x is equal to zero is my first answer. So if I look at options, that might be, that might be not. Um, or x, that will go to the right hand side, is equal to minus two. Okay, so there is the first answer. Okay, so this one was was differentiation um, where we needed to to get the maximum or or the minimum um, and what I've done, I have included for you how to to work it out as well, so that you have have a memo. Okay, so if you now look at a different question here, they tell you straight. Okay, we need to to look at this, and we will need to to work out what is um, the integral of this formula. Okay, and what you will see automatically is they've added a C in all the answers. 
because we don't know if there is a constant or not. So we will add the C to nearly indicate there might be a constant. If there wasn't a constant, the constant is zero. OK, so, so it's just an nearly placeholder or if, if it might be. Okay, so let's let's look at at this and how I normally and what I will also nearly tell you guys is for the exam how I will do this is is step by step. So I will do the integration of that, then look at my answer sets and see if I can eliminate. And as I go along, um, it might become clearer before you even need to work out the last one, um, what your answer is. OK, so. X2, so if we need to need to integrate. Um, remember. We say plus one. And then we will divide by whatever that is. So it's two plus one divided by three. So we actually have that as x3 divided by three. Okay, so let's see. Not, not, okay. So by just looking at at the first one, we nearly could have already identified um, that that is going to be be your answer. OK, so let's just do the other ones. So 2x, remember it's 2x plus 1, um, or sorry, 2x to a power of one. So now it's one plus one. So that is two divided by two. So we get from there that we're sitting with x to a power of two. So that would have been wrong in any case. Also wrong. That is at least right. That would have been also wrong. So still, we look at option option two. Oh, sorry, option three as as the correct one. Okay. Then we look at x a half. Remember, we add one. So it is x three over two. Divided by three over two. Okay, and if we divide by something that's three over two and we want to bring it to the top, we need to, to change this around so that we if we do that, our final answer will be two over three x to the power of 3 over 2. Okay, remember, if we want to take that to the top, we need to swap it around. I'll show you now also why we just swap it around. Um, but that is when that's an option. That's an option. So we get that option 3 is, is the correct one. So let's let me quickly just show this again so if we have three over two divided sorry x to the power of three over two divided by three over two so what i would have done to get rid of the three over two is to say i will multiply by two over three but what i do at the bottom i need to do at the top as well so 
Let me roll it right to this side. Okay, so at the bottom, the two and two, three and three will cancel out. So you will actually just divide by one. And then you sit at the top, two over three times x to a power of three over two. Okay, so that is why when we divide by something like this, when we bring it to the top, we can just swap it around that it is two over three. Okay, so this was one where they, where they told you to integrate. Um, so you got the formula, needed to integrate the formula, um, and from there you basically got, got options for you to work out. Um, again, what, what I normally would, would do in this case is to just start at the first one um, and then as you go through nearly eliminate options. Um, it does make it a bit simpler when when you then need to pick between between certain options. Okay. And again included is is the, the answer worked out as well so that you can just if you want to to look at how it was structured and it is included um, in the in the presentation again i will share the presentation with you guys on the on the whatsapp chat um, it is supposed to be also on the the Western Cape portal. I will just make hundred percent sure again. I will will add it there. Um, and again, if you're not yet part of a WhatsApp group, I've just posted the the link into into the chat as well, um, so that we can we can get everybody onto onto the group. Okay, so so. Let's look at at the next question. So in this one, they, we need to evaluate. So we need to basically look at, at this. Um, and we need to nearly evaluate or work out what, what is the area um, within this this um, graph so so we first need to check okay integration between two and minus one um, and we will need to integrate that formula first okay so we will need to integrate this first and then work between two and minus one and get one of the answers. So, so let's first integrate this. So when we integrate it, minus four X, remember there's like a hidden one. Um, so plus one, one plus one is two. So we will divide by two then plus, plus six. Um, so it would have been plus six X. So let's work this out. So it is minus two X to the power of two plus Six x. Okay, so you can also see it there in in the answer set. At this point, and 
and again you you can really decide if you want to put in the constant it is not really going to make a difference because this is going to be used for the x values so you will in any case get that when we put in two and we minus the other one that the constants will fall away okay so what i normally do in this instance i would not even look at the at the constant because it might just create more confusion as you work it out um, than really adding adding any value because what you're going to do in any case you're going to say um, I'm going to use this formula. What I'm going to do in this formula, I'm going to put in two. I'm going to get my answer. Then I'm going to subtract my answer of what we get with the minus one if we substitute the minus one in the formula. Okay, so if we had to see here, uh, and we had to C in the second one, it would have been C minus C, um, and it would have been, would, would disappear. So I would, when I need to evaluate the integral, need to work it out by substituting, I will ignore the C, um, just that it does not at some stage, um, you might maybe forget that it is C minus C and when you set up or end up with 2C and when it becomes, okay, but what do I do with it? And again, it will not appear in in your questions um, or in your answers. So then you might even substitute um, the C with something. So so I would, when, when I work out these integrals, um, and I need to work out the area or I need to work out the evaluation of it, I will not include the C. Okay, so let's now look at this. We need to put in the two into this equation. Um, so let's just give ourselves a bit more, more space. So if I put in the two, it is minus two, two times to the power of two plus six times two. So that will be the first one. And I just want to make sure that that is not seen as 21. And then we will need to subtract. So minus two, minus one to the power of two. Okay, so let's let's see what what we get from this. Okay, two to the power of two is four. 4 times minus 2 is minus 8. 6 times 2 is 12, so that is plus 12. So that would have been positive 4. Just look at this one. Minus 1 to the power of 2 is 1. 1 times minus 2 is minus two. Positive six times minus one is minus eight. So we've got four and then in this one we've got minus minus ten. And why don't I get any of those? So four minus minus ten Okay, sorry. That is 
Well, I made a mistake. That is not minus eight. I was already looking at the final answer, so that is minus six. This is minus eight. So minus times minus is positive, so four plus eight is 12, which is option, option three. Okay, so just remember I had to eight there, so I already nearly made the sum in my head. Um, so six times minus one is minus six. Um, minus two minus six is minus eight. So four minus minus eight is actually four plus eight, which is 12. Okay, so in this one, we basically looked at, at the integral. We need to evaluate it. Um, what they can also ask you is work out the area. That is exactly the same. Um, I just quickly want to check. So, yeah, each time they, they say evaluate, so nearly get used to to that term of evaluate the integral um, to to basically work out um, what what your your area is or what the answer is. Okay, again, you will see that I have added the the way of working it out for you guys um, so that that you have that as well. Okay, so we first did uh, integration where you needed to integrate, then we looked at evaluation nearly, so looking at, at the graph, integrate it, um, and then we will need to work out between two points. Um, so also just be careful with this, you still need to integrate this formula. Um, you can't just substitute. Um, so if you just substitute it, let's just see, minus one times that, that been four, Minus four, that would have been minus eight, so it would have been minus two. Four plus. Okay, so at least there would not have been an answer for you if, wait, that is your eight. Yeah, so at least there was not an answer for you if you did not. Um, you know, just be careful, sometimes um, there is also an answer if you just substitute that into the x's. Um, so again, what you actually did here is you did the integration and then you worked it out. Okay, so let's, let's go to, to the last one. Um, and just gave you a bit two two questions to work out. Um, so let's. I am going to duplicate this. So that we just work with one and then the other one. Okay, so that is, that's the first one that we're going to work with. So, evaluate each of the following definite integrals um, and then work out to two decimal places. Okay, so I assume because there's a three that it might be that, that we need to work with decimals. Um, 
but okay first we need to need to integrate that so we have x plus five if we integrate that remember it is x one plus one divided by what is on top plus 5x it would have been one so we would have divided it by one um, so we get x to the power of two divided by two plus five x and now we need to evaluate it between three and one okay so you would get for one then minus the bottom one Okay, so the top one, two to the, oh sorry, x to the power of two, so three to the power of two, divided by two. Okay, so that's where the decimal comes in, plus five to the power of three, and then. We substitute for one, so minus so one to the power of two divided by two plus five times one. Okay, so three to the power of two is nine, nine divided by two is 4.5 plus 15 so what we have here is 19.5 and then just let's see what we will minus it with so 1 to the power of 2 is 1 1 divided by 2 is 0 0.5 plus 5 so we will subtract from the 19.5, 5.5. So 19.5 minus 5.5, that is equal to 14. Let's just check if that is correct. Okay, so there we have it. That's the first one, still wondering, I guess it's more for the second one. Um, that that we need to worry about um, the two decimals. Okay, so first integrate what is between the brackets. Then after you've integrated, substitute um, the formula with the top one minus basically and substitute the formula with the bottom one and and you will work out the answer okay let's look at at the second one and again let's just crop we have a bit more of of room Okay, so in this one, basically a bit different how, how this looks like. Um, but let's just, it's a constant, so we can rewrite it as that. Okay, so there's not uh, x or anything, it is basically a constant, so we are allowed to rewrite that function as that function, okay? So then if we differentiate, still 1.1 plus 1, at the bottom it is just remember we will need to multiply with a 2 at the bottom there is already a 2 
So don't think that already takes into account the two. It just takes into account that original two. So we still need to add the two from the one plus one, the, the exponent. And then with the other one, we can just say that is x, x to the power of one, the one does not change the five over two. Okay, so then if we just simplify it a bit, we get x to the power of two divided by four plus five over two times x. And now we need to do the real placement. So the first one we will substitute in 10 and then with the second one we will substitute in the one. Okay, so x to the power of 2, so 10 times to the power of 2 divided by 4 plus 5 over 2 times 10. Let's just do that first. 10 times 10 is basically 100 divided by 4 is 25. 5 times 10 is 50 divided by 2 is also 25. Okay, I hope I worked that out correctly. It looks weird um, or too correct. Um, substitute the 1 into it. So 1 to the power of 2 over 4. So it's 1 times 1, so it is a quarter. And then 5 over 2 times 1, it is 5 over 2 times 1 stays the same, but it is 5 over 2, which is 2.5. Okay, so 0.25 plus 2.5 is so we minus it by 2,75. So 50 minus 2,75 gives us 47,25. Okay. Thank goodness it is correct. Um, Sometimes it looks too good to be true, um, but when it is actually okay. okay. So, again, what we basically did is we, we simplified it um, or made it a bit easier to understand. Um, so, a bit easier to understand because Again, I don't really want to want to work with a with a, a fraction like this. Okay, so remember this one, x over two. We need to integrate. So if we need to integrate that it is x1 plus 1. Remember, there was already a 2. So there was already a 2. So now we still bring that 2 down as well. So that is where the 2 times 2 becomes a 4. Okay, does that, does that make sense? So there, there was... No, no worry at all. I fully understand. Um, so remember, there was already 
the x divided by 2. So if we integrate, we need to bring that 2 now also down. Okay, so that is where it becomes x to the power of 2 over 4. Does, does that make sense? Okay, let's quickly check. Other. Ooh, okay, now my screen has, has frozen. Um, so hopefully I will be, my chat screen will be up and running soon. Um, Yeah, my chat screen is frozen, so I'll I'll check into into the chats now when it is um, comes back. Hopefully, it does now. Still not. Um, okay, I'll I'll hopefully get to it now. Okay, so so that nearly is is the things that. That we will need to need to know about about chapter seven. So it is you've got some of the the integration formulas that that we we need to need to know, um, and then we need to basically work out um, the area underneath underneath the curve. OK, so we've looked at a few exercises to to cover that. Yes, so let's quickly. Yeah, so that's that's the two limits. That was also substituted um, in the the ten and and the one. Okay, so for you guys, nearly it's it's nearly a practice of of this for all time because that is you you will get something like this in in the exam you might have seen it already in the mock exam so yes we we will get the marginal revenues that you will need to work back and things in in the exam as well um, but you will get one of the, the questions or chapter seven type of of theory questions um, that you basically need to evaluate one of the, the, the integrals. OK, so we still got an hour, so let us move on to to the next chapter as well. So. So let's let's do that. Let me quickly. Save this one for um, for now. Let me quickly get the other one. Let's take a, a just a five minute leg stretch. Um, let me get the other presentation up and running, and then let's let's start with at least with the with the next chapter. Then might be that we get that done and then we can start fully with the exam prep um, from from next week so let me while we just take a, a leg stretch let me quickly just get the other one up and running OK, 
Okay. Let me also just share. Okay, cool. Okay, so let's let's also do and start and we might finish now with it, but then that's also fine when we are then from next next time we can just focus on on the exam prep. So this is um, chapter eight. So basically what we just did is looking at integration. So this chapter eight is looking at at the application of the integration. Um, so in there we will move from marginal to total function. So in differentiation, we basically worked out what is your marginal functions. So now they might give you a marginal function and we need to work back to, to total functions. So marginal revenue, marginal cost, marginal profit, and you need to work back to the, to the total functions. And then we will also look at your consumer and your producer surplus. Um, again, I think that is, that's again one of the important things, but consumer and producer surplus, basically what we're gonna do is what we've now done with uh, the areas under the curve, we're gonna use that same principle nearly to work out the consumer and the producer surplus. Um, so again, there's reason why why we did it. Okay, so so basically out of this chapter, um, the things that we need to nearly know for the exam is basically to apply the integration. Um, remember integration is the reverse of differentiation. So what we're basically going to do is move back um, from marginal revenue to a marginal cost and things like that. Um, and then the final thing nearly is to look at consumer surplus and, and producer surplus. I was I was just thinking where did I I will I will paste that also in there's a nice there's a nice one in in your study unit as well that nearly looks at how we move back to to marginal cost and and things like that I think it was in the previous chapter but but basically the things that that we need to look for from a marginal cost and so we will basically integrate um, the total cost to to get to to marginal cost so oh sorry differentiate so now we need to integrate marginal cost to go back to to total cost okay so that's nearly the whole time um, what we're going to do so from marginal cost to go to total cost we're going to do the integration if you need to know a little bit more of a marginal cost and the formula if they want to or something like this as a definition question um, I've just added it here so that it nearly in the back of your your mind you you have it um basically not going to go too much into this um but what this is looking at is nearly that from total revenue um again we said that you get marginal cost, you will need to need to integrate that to, to go to back to the total cost or total revenue. So that is just 
again taken out of one of the, the books and then again formulas for marginal revenue um, again it might be so there's normally like one or two definition types of questions somewhere in in your paper um, so I will also after this session um, so when I do the to the formula prep for you I will also nearly go back and look at all the all the definitions that are included in all the study units and just make a list for you guys so that if there is a definition or um, what they also like to do is to give you four or five definitions and ask which one is the incorrect one or which one is the correct one and they change slight wordings in some of the others so what i will do i will just list from study unit one to eight um, all the definitions when you guys have it so if you get a question like that again you can just look at the, the definition page or the formula page when you need it okay so i will i will make sure that you guys get get that okay so then the last part is nearly looking at consumer and producer surplus so remember ages ago when we did it for the, the linear we basically got that equilibrium point we would have said okay we get that that would have been your consumer surplus that would have been your your producer surplus linear was easy because that is a triangle and the formula for triangle is of times base times height so that was in a sense very easy compared to to what we now need to work out um, so chapter phew, let's quickly see what chapter was that now it does really take us back two months nearly um, when we did consumer and surplus for linear i think we probably all have forgotten nearly again about it um, so that was your your producer and consumer surplus for for linear so now it does become a bit tricky because now we're working with a slightly different supply and demand curve um, so it might be that both of them are non-linear but there's certain things that we can get out of it so so we have gotten from the previous chapter that if I need to work between that and that point, um, we would have gotten this area. Okay, so we would have gotten that area. So not a problem because the total area is always, and let's get to, the total area that we're working with is always a rectangle. Okay, so the total area will be um, say a rectangle, the length times the breadth, and then what we will do is subtract this component that is underneath the um, the line so it doesn't matter what line it is we know that if we integrate the line um, and we work it out between the two points we can we can get that value okay so that is nearly what we've done 
in in the previous chapter. So we're just changing it up a bit that what we end up with here is not our final answer. Um, so like the previous one, we work out it out, but then we must just subtract it from from the producer surplus. The same will be if we look at at the consumer surplus side. Um, again, we will we will have a tri a rectangle, um, and we will need to need to subtract um, that consumer surplus, or we want to have a full one. We will just add the rectangle to that piece. Okay, so I'll show you. We've got a few examples of that coming up, um, and that's why I thought let's rather do it now after we've done chapter seven then again waiting a week before we get to this because it is basically the practical of nearly working out the integration of of uh, the previous work okay so just two things for you guys and it is from from your study guide so um, if we need to work out a consumer surplus, we take the area um, under the demand curve. So let's look at the area under the demand curve. Um, so so that whole area we would have gotten from that formula, and then we will subtract. Um, the rectangle. So that is basically what we what we do. We work out the demand function, subtract. If we want to do the producer surplus, we take that rectangle, like I said, and we subtract um, the piece that we calculated to get to the producer surplus. Okay, so basically, so we're not going to do this component, um, we basically the whole time working with with that rectangle um, and working with that one to find out all the consumer surplus or the producer surplus. Okay, so the consumer surplus just again is the demand function minus the rectangle, um, the producer surplus is a rectangle minus the supplied demand function. Okay, and again, integrate that, integrate that, um, and then we work according to the numbers that they give us. Again, they need to give you, and we will look at it, but we need to give you those two numbers that you work with, um, else for one is always zero because again you can't work out quantities that are less than zero so if i don't give you the lower limit as in one two or three quantities we will assume it is zero because you can't create something negative so you can't have minus one shares that you have produced or anything like that so we will then limit it to zero because you can't go negative. Okay. So let's quickly look at at what they've given us here. So it's not really we're not gonna sketch anything. Uh, so I just want to check if this is actually something that we're going to do. So sketch each of the following demand functions. Shade for area representing consumer surplus um, and calculate for consumer surplus. Okay, cool. So we're going to calculate 
um, the consumer surplus. So to calculate the consumer surplus, so here they tell us that is the demand curve, um, and we will need to work at Q0 is, is equal to 8. Okay, so this is definitely, let me just, so this is a different formula. Let me just quickly just hide it because this is now going to make make us confused. Sorry about this. Because it was confusing me as well. Um, Let's just make sure that we have that. Um, so in the answer set, I also just want to make 100% sure that the other piece is also taken out. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's look at, we need to work out consumer surplus. You can see consumer surplus is that part. So when we look at consumer surplus, we work out what is the total demand function and then we will minus the, the area. Okay, so let's say, let's say that was now the function. So that was eight. Now, how would you work out, um, so if we got the Q is 8, how would you work out what this value is at that equilibrium? So how would you work out what this price is? And so we only got Q is eight. Um, we've got here, remember, Y cutoff, so that is 100. So how do we get that point? And so if we substitute the eight into this formula, we can get what the, the price demand number is. So it is 8 times 8 is, so let's quickly write that down, 100 minus 8 to the power of 2. So 100 minus 64 is 36. Okay, so that point is 36. So then I can already just work out the, what the rectangle will be because that will be 36 times 8. 
So I haven't done the integration part yet, but at least I have done the 288 component um, so that we have a component that is the rectangle. Um, we still need to integrate this to, to get to the whole area underneath, um, but at least um, one part is done. Okay, so this nearly is not new. We did that in, in chapter three as well when we needed to work out the price or we needed to work out the, the quantity. Yes, it's a quadratic function. It's not a, a straight line function, but but we use the same principle. OK, so same principle used that we substitute in. Um, they give us the one um, we work out the other one. OK, so let's integrate this so that we can work out the area underneath the curve. So 100, it will be Q1. Then Q2 plus 1 divided by 3. So we've got 100 Q minus Q3 divided by 3. Okay, so that is our integration. And we need to get it from 100. Um, and I would have, oh, huh. okay, so I swapped it around. Oh, yes, that's Q. So just make sure I would have now, I've done it from 100 to zero. So just be very careful. Um, I, I would have used for price. Um, so just be very, very careful not to make that mistake. Um, I would have actually used price um, by putting in my 100 and not realized I must actually just substitute Q um, and not P. So just, I'm so used to <laughs> working on this side um, that it didn't even cross my mind. Um, and I'm reading Q, but I'm writing down P. Um, so eight is your Q. And remember, they did not say there's, there's a bottom Q, so like three or four. Um, then you assume it is zero because, again, um, we can't create a negative quantity. Um, so we will stop at, at zero. Sometimes they might tell you that it is between something like eight and three, then you will need to use um, somewhere free, but then also your your rectangle will change. So um, I will check if we have something like that else. Um, I will see if I can't get um, an example like that. OK, so Q is 8 and 0, so when we put in the 8, 8 times 100 will give you 800. On this side, Q to the, to the power of 3, so 8 to the power of 3 
gives me, I got 512, but remember you need to divide it by 3. So 512 divided by 3 is 170.67. So if I subtract those two, I get that we need to say 629.33. Remember, we would normally say the eight substitute in minus the zero. So just check if we put in the zero and that is normally like that unless there is some constant, but we don't know the constant because we in any case integrating. So 100 times zero is zero. Um, zero to the power of three is zero. So the bottom one, if it's zero, it will always be, be zero. So we basically don't have that in the equation. So we will have the 629.33 minus the 288. Which gives us 3.4133. Why does that? Ah, OK, so it is um, exactly the same. So um, I think what is important here is first to get to the, the price we need to substitute and then the other one is not to do what I did when you then integrate and you need to substitute, remember to use the Q and not like I did the first time I wanted to use the use for price. Um, so just remember we are working with Q. Um, I would probably have later on realized, but I'm actually substituting the wrong thing. Um, but this is basically the level it will be. So learning from from chapter seven on how to work out the area and then if it is consumer surplus we needed to work out this area um so let's just check the that is looking at let's bring in a different color so that is working out this whole area. Then we had this component. So then that top piece is basically what we've worked out here is in that piece because it is the total minus that, that green area. Okay, so that is that is how we will we will do it every time. The the only difference comes in is when we need to do a producer surplus, we will work with the supply curve. So let's let's get to one where we have okay, so here we have the supply curve. Um, and the okay, so let's do. I'm gonna when you guys get it, you can do the other one. Um, quickly. Yes, yes, yes. It it is thirty six. So that thirty six is 
is the, the 36 that you use to to work out the rectangle. OK, so you are all right. That that is the 36 um, that is here that we use to to work out that rectangle of eight times 36. OK, so that is that is where we got the two. It was the 36 times eight. OK, so that is that is 100 percent. OK, so let's just do the supply curve of this one. Um, the answer for the other ones are included, um, but let's just get the process that we've now done um, the same for for the supply curve. So if I look at the supply curve, let's just roughly <laughs> do it like that as well. Um, there's going to be an equilibrium. Um, it goes through the point four. And then at Q zero, it is five. So again, we will need to work out what that price is. Um. OK, so we will need to work out that price. So firstly, again, substitute for the price. Five times two plus four. That is 25 plus 4 is 29. Okay, so now with the producer surplus, okay, remember, and let's again, it's easier to get all the colors. We want to get that, sorry. So we want to get that area. I'm now actually coloring in the wrong one. Do that. I will put the curve through there again. Well, let's just do that. So that we can see what we need to do. OK, so I want to get that. with the integration will give me this area. And so let's let's quickly do the integration first. So the integration will give me the the blue area is the integration. So let's integrate this. So Q to the power of two comes Q to the power of three divided by three. Plus four Q. And we do it for five to zero. So 
Okay, let's just do it like we did in the previous chapter. We would have said five substitute into the Q, so five to the power of three divided by three plus five times four is 20. Zero goes in there, zero to the power of three is zero plus zero times four is zero. So again, when we have zero, it will always be, be equal to zero, but again, just wanted to show it. So five to the power of three is 125 divided by three. Why does that? Okay, it's not uh, plus 20, so 125 divided by 3 is 41.67 plus 20. So we sit with not a nice number, 61.67. So we've got the blue area. We need to get to the red area, but now let's first get to the whole rectangle. Okay, so the rectangle is the 29 times 5. which is 145. So if I want to get to the red component, I will say the total 145 minus the blue component, the 61,67 gives me the red component, which is 83.33. Let's just quickly see where it is 83.33. So what I now just did is to go systematically through it. I think that is sometimes easier than just is to start at a point. Um, so what you can also do is start at at the rectangle, work that out first, then say, okay, but I've got that, let's subtract the integral to get to to that component. Okay, so that is nearly the whole time how you're going to do this piece of work is when it is consumer surplus, um, it's a bit different. You take the whole area underneath and you subtract the rectangle. When it is the producer surplus, you take the rectangle and you subtract the piece underneath the um, underneath the curve. So you could nearly again look at these two. We took the rectangle, we subtracted the piece underneath the curve. Here we took the everything underneath the curve and we subtracted the rectangle. Okay, so the Nearly the formula played out in both of these examples as, as we will have it. Okay, so I think that is nearly important. And you can go through through some of some of these examples. Um, well, there's one more. So um, and just again, if you look at at this one, 
it was originally a straight line um, and then again you need to work out the, the consumer and um, producer surplus so I think um, question three in here is a very nice one for you to to actually go go and practice as well um, we can I will add it into our exam prep next week that that we can sorry can go through it as well but I think um, after today's sessions nearly the important thing is and sorry that I'm jumping around is that when you look at the consumer and producer surplus um, a lot not a lot everything that we did in chapter seven of working out what is underneath the, the, the curve when we integrate it we're going to use um, for this piece of work okay so the things that is important nearly um, is this slide nine um, so that just visually one can see um, slide 10 that's also in your study guide so that you can just make once again sure which one you subtract from from which one and then slide 11 and 13 that that we actually have worked worked through it so chapter 8 nearly is there's two things two things in chapter eight i'm so glad that it makes more sense now um, so if two things in chapter eight is basically when we look at the the marginal cost um, go back to to total cost those few principles and then the other one is when we look at producer surplus total surplus and and consumer surplus nearly how to work that out yes there's a there's a hand hi sir yes um you see the the first question that i did the first exercise on on this one on this yes. one but the first exercise there was a second equation that you remove yes do you still have it because i'm struggling to 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 calculate that one okay let me quickly let me quickly get it back Wait, why doesn't let me quickly check this one? I will get it back now. Just give me. Why is it not? Oh, OK, wait, wait, wait. I know what I did. I actually deleted the whole, the whole thing. So let me just. Let me quickly get it back. I know it was in the study guide, so let me quickly. Get it back and put it. Mm. In for you.
I'm just checking quickly where it is again. Let's see, where will it be easier to find it? Got it. Let me just. Oi, that is not good. Um... And then, why is it? I will get it now, just taking some time to get it nicely out of. Let me stop sharing, then I can work with it a bit easier. Yes. I will put it back now on. I just want to quickly get a bit uh, sketch of it. It was very small in my
there was I'll add yes let's I'll add that to the to the prep next week um, so you guys can add a few more questions in it um, so especially that one that you gave now let you can guys can add more to the chat or to in this chat or the whatsapp chat with some of the um questions that we need to look at um assignment questions mock exam questions any of those things um then we can handle it next week and in the prep was this the one that that you referred to that was the second the second one that I had. Yes, this is the one. Okay, cool. Okay, so so this is a bit more tricky in how we need to um, nearly need to first integrate. So when we do this for to work out the um, uh, the so let's first get also they they tell us it's at at nine so let's first work out what is your p at point nine okay so your P at point nine is one hundred divided by nine plus one. So hundred divided by ten is equal to ten. So at Q zero, which is nine, we've got the P is equal to 10 so so at least those two um, is is a easier one one to do um, so when we get to the triangle or oh, sorry rectangle part it is the 10 times 9 which will give us the 90 so that is just when we get to that part but you want to first you need to integrate this formula and that's the difficult part um, so the difficult part is not nearly to replace the p over q it is to 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 integrate okay so when we look at this and now this I think what makes it so much more difficult in a sense is we need to nearly go back to chapter two um, three when we looked at at logs so remember when we had one over n that answer would have been log of n so when we differentiate it um, we would have so now we need to move this back um, when we integrate so this one will be so let's let's take 500 first aside Okay, so happy that this is still the same, um, that take 100 out of it so that it is 1 over Q plus 1. 
and then we can apply the lock rule to that. So when we integrate it, it will be 100 because that is on its own. And I should not have that there. Let me just take that out. Okay, so one over n is log of n. So one over q plus one is log of q plus one. Okay, so that is um, that is how we will work it out, and then you will do it between. Okay, did I say nine? And then. They don't give us the lower one, so again we make it as as zero. So it would have been hundred times log nine plus one, so it's just log ten minus again okay, this instance we should not throw away the zero. Log zero plus one is log of one. Okay, so it is a a weird one this nearly um, because this is a different equation. It's not just one that we can can change to Q two plus Q one or something like that. We will need to work out what the log is of it. So I think there is some in chapter seven that we also that second or third slide with all the types of integrations. Um, I quickly went over the log, but the, this is what we will use for this problem is actually looking at um, replacing it with log. So when we integrate it, 100 over Q plus 1, it will become log Q plus 1. Okay, does that make a bit more sense? Um, so then again, you will work out the same log 10 minus log 1. Um, so let's quickly 10 log is 2.3. I've rounded it off, so it might just one log is zero. Okay, that is interesting. I did not realize that. Um, and then you will multiply it by 100. So you will get the 2.3 times 100, which is 250. You will minus it by the rectangle. Where am I now? Read the screen. Moved. Let me just quickly get it back to where we were. Okay, minus the 90. And that answer would have been something like 140 or 140 point something. Okay, I will. Let me just add the answer to that for you in here as well. Okay, so that you can nearly look at how it was done. But the important thing is um, that you nearly need to go back and just check that we are actually using um, the lin function or the log function when we in 
integrate that. Okay. Hopefully that makes a bit more sense. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Um, thanks for the attending the session. Um, I will share the recording with you later today. I've got a bit more other sessions, so it will probably only be um, later tonight, um, but maybe a bit earlier. So I'll just see where I have a